Hey guys, Gibbs here and welcome to the Zenless Zone Zero tier list. We're going to start with stun characters, then DPS, and finish it out with support and anomaly agents. S rank is going to be completely broken and game changing agents. A tier is going to be your extremely good or above average units. B tier is going to be your pretty good or average units. Anything B tier and up, I would recommend investing in. C tier is going to be the below average agents or the ones that are struggling. They may just need a new agent release to become A or B tier. And D tier are pretty much the trash agents, the ones you want to completely stay away from investing in. First up on the list is Anby. Anby is going to be a B tier unit. Love her or hate her, she is one of the three stun characters in the game right now, and stun characters are extremely important in Zenless Zone Zero for the boss fights. If you don't have Lycaon or Coletta on your team, you're most likely going to have Anby on your team. And that's not a bad thing, she requires minimal investment from resources, and she's completely free. Our next stun character is Lycaon, the literal definition of a broken S tier agent. Lycaon is the best character in the entire game game right now. His basic attacks have a 40% daze multiplier and a 35% stun multiplier. He has the fastest daze buildup in the entire game currently and if you are running an ice team with Ellen Joe, he has a 25% ice resistance down to enemies. He's extremely versatile and fits into any team. The last stun agent is Coletta. Coletta is going to fall into the B tier with Anby. I don't find her to be extremely good enough for A tier since her basic attacks are a little slower and lock her into an animation. She seems to rely off of Ben to avoid taking damage and makes her a little less versatile with team building. She does have a higher daze application than Ambi and is the only character in the game right now with a special interaction with another agent, Ben, but for now I'm going to have to keep her in the B tier. Speaking of Mr. Ben Bigger, with Coletta he might be a C, but overall I have to place him in the D category. Right now it feels like you will only build Ben if you're building or wanting to main Coletta, but without her he is almost useless. He is slow, his dodges don't really move you anywhere, he scales off of defense and his overall attack is low. However, Mr. Ben does have the highest multiplier in the entire game, but that multiplier is based on his counter attack. Right now, I'd have to say to stay completely away from him unless you're wanting to main him and run him with Coletta. On to the DPS characters, starting with everyone's very first DPS, Billy. And I know I'm going to break a lot of hearts with this one, but I had to overcome it as well. Billy is going to be in the D category. He is very mobile and has great AoE with his dash attack and ultimate. However, his damage output when compared to other DPS units is extremely underwhelming. I believe it may actually be the lowest in the game, and sadly, his AoE can't make up for it. Next up is Corrin, who is quite the opposite of Billy, not S tier opposite. Overall, she is a C tier unit, she is definitely not a mobile agent and actually struggles against enemies with mobility since her attacks lock her in place, but she does do extremely high DPS to stationary or dazed enemies, and as a bonus, she is also able to stagger lower tier mobs so they can't even fight. I could see some situations where she may be in B tier for you, for example if you don't have an S rank DPS but have really good supports and stunners, but aside from that, she is staying in the seats here for me. Our last A rank DPS agent is Anton, and he is a tricky one. Overall, a D tier agent, with the possibility to become A tier. So how does that work? Anton needs to run another shock applicator, Light Grace, or even Rena, or he really struggles. His special skills burst mode is where most of his DPS comes from, and it can be ridiculously high. Straight up, alone, Anton is probably the d of D, but with Grace and a proper shock team, he is capable of having some of the highest DPS in the game. Nekumata is going to be our our first S rank DPS and she is one of my personal favorites. She's going to be in the A tier, she is fast and agile, has incredible mobility and is able to AOE clear enemies very quickly, but her damage ceiling is not that high compared to other S rank DPS agents. She does deal physical damage and so far no enemies in the game have physical damage resistance. The best way to sum up Nekumata is she is the best beginner friendly S rank DPS agent. While she may not clearly excel at anything, she can clear everything and that lands her with an over overall A rank. Next up is Soldier 11 and she is going to be an A tier as well. At first I didn't think much of Soldier 11 and then I started playing her videotape series and oh my god she is fun and powerful. Her basic attack multiplier is around 2-3 to three times higher than any other units. She has the highest DPS in the game behind Ellen Joe. But there is one big thing that is holding Soldier 11 back from S tier, and that is that she deals fire damage. Fire damage is weak against mech units, and there are a lot of mech units in the game. Even some stages you'll have dual mech unit bosses. She's the only unit in her faction right now, making team building a little tricky. It seems her best team may be Ben and Coletta. S rank for raw DPS damage output, overall A rank for struggling against mechs and having a tricky spot finding a team. Next up is Ellen Joe in our second S tier broken character. 
Ellen is the strongest DPS in the game by far. She can actually solo bosses with no teammates because of her kit. She has a built-in 50% skill crit damage and 30% ice damage buff, big multipliers, low energy cost, and AoE burst. If you have Ellen Joe, I would suggest aiming for Lycaon on the banner. You'll get Sukaku for free and you've basically won the game already. Speaking of Sukaku, for our first support, Sukaku is going to be an overall A tier support. Sukaku has the highest attack buff in the entire game. Not only is she broken with the ice team, she can buff any of your DPSs. She also has a pretty nice grouping mechanic. She is a little different difficult and clunky to play. When compared to other agents, she does take some time to build up her attack buff, but the buffs don't lie and the overall is a definite A tier. Our next support is Nicole and one of my favorites. Overall, she is a B rank, but when Zhu Wan is released, she will definitely become an A rank must have for Zhu Wan players. She has excellent grouping and has a defense down to enemies. That alone makes her valuable support in my opinion. I have her on my main team and it's going to be hard to get rid of her. She also has a 25% ether damage bonus that is pretty useless right now, but is going to become extremely valuable to support Zhu Wan. Lucy is up next and overall is a B rank right now. There are a few players who swear by Lucy and would place her in A rank, I just haven't seen it yet. Lucy is the only summon agent right now. She does provide attack buffs to the entire team and a team wide energy region. There may be an A rank place for her in a double DPS comp, but for now she is a good unit, but I've got to keep her in B tier. Next up is Rena, a really good A tier support. She provides a 30% penetration ratio for the entire team and can provide shock extend for shock team. Her overall playstyle is very smooth and she builds up decibel points pretty quickly, allowing you to ultimate faster with your main DPS. She does very well early game and is very versatile, allowing her to be a part of just about any team. Piper is our first anomaly agent and I'm really hoping we can find a higher rating for her, but overall she is a C. But with Nekumato, she is a B tier unit. Piper is very fun to play and has the highest assault damage buildup in the game, which works well with Nekumato's skill that deals extra damage to enemies who have been assaulted. Aside from that, there's not much of a place for her. I've watched a Nekumata, Piper, and Lucy team, and while it seems amazing on paper, right now it's just not working out like it should. Hopefully some tweaks and we can make that physical assault team a top tier team. Last Last on the list is Grace, and overall a B tier unit and an A tier with Anton. She has the highest shock applicator and anomaly mastery in the game, but all that really depends on taking Anton in your team. Unlike Soldier 11, Grace and Anton are the best agents against mech units. Anton does put Grace in the A category, but be on the lookout for a better electric shock DPS in the future. In summary, this is your tier list. Let me know what team comps you guys are running in the comments section and if you've been able to turn any of these D or C ranked characters into B or higher tiers. Always looking for new and strategies in the game. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.